there, I'm Mr. Massey. Uh, welcome to the Sardis Greenhouse. Uh, I want to give you a little tour of what we're growing here in the summer and fall program. Uh, it's called a hydroponic growing system. So let's uh, walk in here and have a look and see what we have. Okay, you can see we have some people working on our back bench here, but the main crops we have in here are right in front of you, these larger plants. So we'll start right here. These are long English cucumber plants. You can see they've already grown much taller than all the rest of them. And if you go in nice and close here, you can actually see there's little cucumbers starting. These plants are, have been in the grass for 10 days and they're already starting uh, to produce. So I'm thinking in about a week or so, we'll have full length long English cucumbers. A little farther on here, we have peppers. So these are yellow, orange, and red peppers. And uh, they take a little longer to grow. They take a little longer to produce, but by mid-August, we should be good. It's right now June the what, 16th? I believe so. So, so June 16th, and uh, by mid-August, we should have uh, red, yellow, and orange peppers. Uh, on this side over here, actually we can go here next. These are tomato plants. So we have three different types of tomatoes. This type is gonna be a, sort of a, a golf ball size to, a tomato. We call it a cocktail tomato. On the other side, I know the plants look the same, but they're gonna produce a beefsteak tomato. That's a much bigger one for your uh, burgers, right? And down at the other end, we have grape tomatoes. And so they, all the plants look the same, but they produce different types of tomatoes. We'll talk more about tomatoes in a different lesson. Uh, and last but not least, everybody's favorite. I don't know if it's everyone's favorite or not, but these are eggplant. And they're little small plants right now, but they're gonna grow quickly as well. And we're gonna have a crop of, uh, what do we have here? 12 eggplant in the greenhouse as well. We've really spaced things out normally in the greenhouse. Uh, we have got uh, eight rows of about 25 plants each, so about 200 plants. We've cut that in half for the coronavirus because we need social distancing in here this year. So we've only got four rows. Um, and given ourselves a little more space to work, and a little more room to uh, keep that social distancing happening. But anyway, that's uh, that's what plants we're growing in the greenhouse. So uh, what we have here is one of the most important parts of uh, any greenhouse, but especially in hydroponics. Uh, we are at the fertilizer station. So. Right now, this year, we're keeping things very simple with basically two different fertilizers we're using. This one is called a hydroponic, or hydro veg, it's called actually. And the numbers on the side, 7, 11, and 27, which you can't quite see, indicate that it's a mixture of different fertilizers. And we'll talk more about fertilizers in a different lesson as well, but uh, this bag contains all the nutrients, except for one, basically, that the plants need. Uh, this contains all but nitrogen. Okay, so we mix all the different nutrients in here and they've gone into this tank right here. Okay, you want to zoom up and look inside the tank. It makes a beautiful blue Kool-Aid looking uh, mixture. Don't want to drink that. It won't make you grow bigger. Uh, in fact, even the plants can't handle it, this concentration. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a second. This is calcium nitrate. Nitrogen is the, uh, is the second bag of fertilizer we use. And the reason we don't mix them all into one giant bag is that if we did, all these would solidify into one big solid chunk at the bottom. So we keep those separate until they go to the plant and then they stay in a liquid form. Now, let's come up here and have a look. Uh, the reason we have it in a liquid form is that we need to be able to uptake it with these machines right here. So these are called our fertilizer injectors and they're sucking the fertilizer from a very concentrated form here up through these little hoses and into our main water line. This is our main water line here, it comes from the city, comes along here and when it passes through, it creates a low pressure that sucks up the fertilizer into these injectors. It carries on. You can hear that little click. That's the sound of them working. It comes along here and it can split. But where we want it to go right now is down here, follow the path and down this hose right here and out into the greenhouse. Okay. So, okay. So what we have here is the brains of the greenhouse in a sense. This is our timer. This controls when the fertilizer and the water comes on for the plants. So it's kind of in the middle of a cycle right now. It's on a delay of an hour between cycles, but I can kind of fast track and show you what happens. So we talked about how the water comes through here from the fertilizer injector. So now this water is now full of nutrients for the plants, right? It's not pure water anymore. It's got uh, fertilizer at, by the way, about a 1% ratio. These injectors here bring it at about 1%. 
So this controls when the water comes on. So what I'm gonna do is kind of cheat. I'm gonna turn it on to uh, here and just pl click this button. You'll hear it start to work. You can hear the clicking sound. That means water's being drawn up. You can see it moving a little bit. Um, and the water's now coming up and into these machines, down the lines, and let's follow it and see where it goes. And you'll see that every single plant has one of these little, what we call a dripper. And if we lift this up, you'll see the water is coming out and into the plants, giving the plants a little shot of water. Uh, and if I leave this on for one minute, well, actually, if you look at it, I've actually got two drippers in. And check this out, they're actually different colors. Some of the drippers start with a gray valve, some with a red valve. The red come at two liters per hour, the gray come at four liters per hour. Put it together, you've got six liters per hour dripping into the plant, okay? And if I leave that on for one minute, it should get 100 mils of water. I give these plants 100 mils of water on rainy days about every two hours, up on sunny days about every hour. So these guys get a drink and a snack every hour, okay, uh, on sunny days. And that little is enough to keep them going. And the reason I do that is because they're not actually growing in a, in a medium that has nutrients to begin with. Okay, so now I want to show you kind of uh, what the plants are growing. And I've chosen these are little jalapeno plants. I have four little jalapenos growing uh, just for fun at the end here. And if you look at the material, okay, this is not soil. And this is what you do in hydroponics. In, in regular growing, organic growing, or in a field, if you're growing tomatoes in a field, plants grow in soil, and so there's lots of nutrients in the soil, and the soil holds a lot of water, so you don't have to water them every hour like that. But here, this medium is just made of coconut fiber, coconut husks, it's been chopped up, and it looks like this when it's stored, they're very light, okay, very compacted, and when you fill them with water, they expand to this height here, and the roots of the plant fill this whole bag up, okay? But there's no nutrients in the plant and that's why I need to feed it every hour, right? Uh, and as the plants get bigger, I might even do more than 100 mils an hour. I might do 200 mils an hour because the plants grow bigger, they need more. Plus, you can see they're starting to make flowers. This is where the tomatoes are gonna come out. When they start growing, uh, producing tomatoes, they're gonna need a lot more food to do that, right? Um, so the question is, how do I know how much to water? How, do I do 100 mils, 200 mils, every hour, every two hours? It's kind of hard to tell. Well, I've got a little station right here that helps me with that. So let's just move over here. And you can actually see there's a little bit of water. So I've raised these plants up and I put them on this sort of half pipe trough. And what happens here is I allow any extra water to drain out a little hole in the bottom of the bag. There's a little hole right there. Drain, drains out after it comes through the drippers, out the hole, and then now it's going to go down and I catch it in this little bucket. And what they found through basically science and, and experimentation is that if I can have 20% of the water I put into the plant drain out of the plant, out of the bag, I'm watering about the right amount. So as long as I can measure how much is going in and compare it to how much is going out, I can tell if I'm watering enough. If I'm watering, uh, you know, a, a, a thousand milliliters a day and I'm collecting 200 milliliters in the bucket, I'm doing it right. If I've got less than 200 mils, I need to water more. If I've got more than 200 mils, I can water less. So that's how I can tell if I'm watering enough, and that's why I need to do it with these different types of uh, bags. Okay, so we've talked about how I'm uh, uh, feeding the plants, watering the plants, how to tell if I'm watering enough. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you gotta know if you're gonna be a, a greenhouse grower though. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how the plants themselves are grown. We don't want these peppers to grow, you can see they're, they're growing kind of in multiple directions. There's a kind of split into three here. They're gonna to try to grow. But I don't want this plant growing way all over the greenhouse because um, I won't be able to control it. And also that'll make the plant put more energy into growing leaves than peppers. And I want the plant to put energy into growing peppers. So I've got these strings. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna prune and train these peppers so that they grow up the strings all the way to those cables they're tied up there. And over the course of the year, they should grow all the way to the top. Uh, mine probably will only get about six feet or so because we didn't put ours in here till June, but a commercial greenhouse would put them in in December and grow them all the way till the following October or November and they would be, you know, 15, 20 feet tall by the end. And tomato, and remember, peppers are the slowest growing plant. So 
I'm going to tie these two strings to the plant. They're going to grow their way all the way up the plant. Same with my cucumbers and tomatoes and eggplant. And that way I can control how they're growing and control what they're putting their energy into. Now, while I'm doing that, guess what's going to happen? I'm not the only one who likes peppers. There's little tiny bugs like aphids and spider mites and thrips and fungus gnats and other things, caterpillars that like peppers too. They're going to try to eat them. I have different ways to prevent that. I'll talk about it in a different lesson, but I'll show you this for now. This is called a sticky trap. I'm going to peel this off here. Okay. If I touch that or you get your hair in it or your clothing, that sticks like crazy, but it also sticks to bugs. Any flying insects that would try to eat our plants will fly from the canopy of the plants and get stuck in here. In fact, I can show you, this one's clean, but this one I put in a while ago. And let's have a look at it. You can see there's some little dots. Those are little insects that I can tell what are growing. And I can see these little guys here are called thrips. These are called fungus gnats. So what I can do is I can try to find ways to control them, okay? So uh, these are sticky traps and they go above the canopy of the plant so that I can tell what's growing in there. So the tomatoes are also growing up the strings. You can see we're training them to grow up the strings. Tomatoes grow extremely fast. And these plants specifically are called indeterminate plants that actually will continue to grow as long as I continue to feed them and give them sunlight. Eventually, you'll see these plants will grow and probably within, I'd say, a month, they're going to grow all the way up to that cable up here. But what I've got is I've got these strings wrapped around with extra string on that wire. And as they get too tall, I'll actually unwrap them and lower the whole plant so they can grow more and the tomato plant will continue to produce new tomato flowers and tomato uh, tomatoes at the top of the plant. You can see right now the top of the plant's here, the tomatoes are growing here and here. When these ripen, the new ones will come out of the top of the plant. So I gotta keep lowering the plant, lowering the plant to allow it to continue to produce new tomatoes. And uh, eventually I'll have this whole place full of, you know, six to 10 foot tall plants that I, that I, I get to manage. Okay, so uh, that almost wraps up everything I wanted to show in this lesson about the basics of growing in a hydroponic greenhouse system. But really one of the main reasons that we do grow in a greenhouse at all is because it's very important that we have control over everything we possibly can to make the plants grow the most efficiently. So growing in a greenhouse allows you pr to produce way more fruit or uh, plants in a much smaller space than if I was say growing outside where I couldn't tie them up anywhere and I couldn't control their environment. But because I'm in a greenhouse, I have control over how much they eat, how much they drink. I also have control of the temperature in here. And uh, I can sort of even control some of the sunlight if I want to. Uh, the temperature is really important because these are all kind of tropical plants I'm growing. Tomatoes and peppers, they're really tropical. I want to keep it in the 20s. I don't want it to get cold in here so at night I can turn the furnace on. Or if I have a boiler that skews as well sometimes. In the daytime, I can keep it from getting too hot by keeping the air circulating. Uh, I'm kind of trying to point where the white fans up there, they're not actually on, it's a cloudy day, they're, but on a, on a hot sunny day, those uh, fans, those white fans I'm kind of sort of pointing out in the distance, those will open up and they'll start pushing that hot air out and cold air from the outside, and cold being like 20 degree air, will come in and I can keep getting too hot in here. So hydroponics allow me to control all the different factors that affect how plants grow, uh, at least for the most part, and allow me to give the maximum benefit for the plants. The best, the best food, the right amount of food, the right amount of water, the right temperature, the right air circulation. And in a commercial greenhouse, they would even add carbon dioxide from their furnace or boilers, the byproduct carbon dioxide through, through perforated tubes. They would place them right down in the plants and allow carbon dioxide to come up into the plants. Because of course, carbon dioxide is food for plants too, right? Because of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide along with the water to produce the sugars that grow in the tomato plant. So that's your overview of how we grow in a, in a commercial or a, in our starter screenos for the hydroponics. Uh, and we'll do more lessons later on about specific plants, like how do you grow tomatoes and peppers and, and uh, cucumbers. We'll do lessons more in depth on fertilizers, but that's your overview on the basics of growing in a hydroponic greenhouse system.